Hey guys, this is Mctogic, and welcome back to another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you the Maxence iCatch, uh, which you can see in front of you now. I have two examples of the iCatch, and let's talk about it. So, in my first episode, I talked about the Puck Mouse and the Kensington Mouse. This is an example of the Puck Mouse, uh, and of course I talked about how the problem with the Puck Mouse that everyone had was that it's round and they found it difficult to use for that reason. They preferred to have a standard shaped mouse and so um, what happened was the many mouse manufacturing companies such as Kensington invented their own mouse, created their own mouse with a USB standard so that it could be used with the iMac G3. But uh, that still costs money, right? That costs about 40 or 50 bucks if you wanted to get a new mouse. And so a cheaper alternative was made by Maxence and it's called the iCatch. You see, instead of paying all that money to get yourself a new mouse, well, you already have a mouse that works, right? You've already got your puck mouse, but you just don't like the shape. So what the iCatch does is it's just a piece of plastic, essentially. You pay, I think it was about $10 US, and you just clip it on. Makes a really nice, satisfying snap sound when it clips on, but it feels very um, secure, very snug. It's very clearly um, been carefully engineered to fit the puck mouse and not to scratch it. Uh, I've been worried that when I put take it on or take it off it's it's going to scratch but it really just kind of slips off or on but while it's actually on it does feel very very secure. So I'll show you that again. You put it onto the puck mouse just like this. Oh I messed it up that time. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention so you try you make sure it's aligned and then you basically it just snaps on like that. And you can see on when I actually have it like this, it's basically the shape of a regular mouse now, or a, a kind of semi-weird, but generally a good mouse from the 90s. It's got more of a body to it. And uh, I will tell you that all, as much as I praise the puck mouse, I do think this is a really nice addition. And uh, let's talk about the two variants now. So you can see first off, why is it called the eye catch? Uh, and oh, can we get it to focus there? Yes, it's called the eye catch, and you can see it's got a little logo of a, of a cat. You see, I think that's really genius marketing because it's a cat which is catching a mouse. That's why it's called the eye catch. <laughs> really uh, clever. On the back here, uh, which you can see, possibly you can't see, it's, it's going to be a little hard to see. Uh, let's see if I can get a focus there. Maybe not. But all I was going to say about that is that there is a little um, label on the back saying patent pending and that's the same for both of these. So I assume uh, they did have to get a patent for it, but I mean, who really cares that much about a, a little plastic accessory? They just shipped it without the patent being filed, but just in case anyone was going to copy it, they had to note that down. So uh, I don't know which one of these came first. You can see that there's this one here the um, and the branding of Maxence is a bit different on this one. Uh, I think that this one is not as nice as this one because having a clear one means that we'll go with any color. You see, you notice how when I put it on, well here, let me get another mouse. Here we go, we've got a beautiful tangerine puck mouse. I add the eye catch onto it. Fits perfectly, just the same. And I just love the way that you can still see the color shining through the case. It almost looks like if you just removed the logo of iCatch, um, you you could actually think it might have been an Apple product. And uh, if we're talking about the gold standard of design aesthetics, well, Apple's always the gold standard. So any company, in my view, that makes a product that looks close enough to Apple is doing a good job. If you're making a product that it feels really cheap, then not, not, qu not quite the case. Uh, it's a bit of a thick piece of plastic. It's thick enough that you wouldn't just snap it if you just you know, if you just bent it, you, you, you don't worry that it's going to break. So it was well designed, even though it was pretty cheap product, but it's definitely something that I recommend if you're using puck mice. Now let's look at this one. So I suppose this one is meant to be Bondi Blue or uh, Blueberry. I can't really tell, but you'll see that it is really not the right color for Bondi Blue. It's, it's kind of there, but it's just... I don't know, it's got more of an aquatic kind of colouring rather than Bondi Blue, which is... Well, if you've ever been to Bondi Beach, which I have, uh, being an Australian, you'll see that it's very different to that. Let me just get my uh, Blueberry example. This is my Blueberry Puck Mouse. Does it look similar to Blueberry? 
not really. It's not really similar to Blueberry either. No. Oh, not even focusing right now. Let's just try and get that. Let's get that one out of the frame. Yeah, you can see that's not really a proper match either. And what about the Bondi? Likewise, not really a match for it, but I suppose with blue it does at least. It looks good enough, right? Yeah, but I do prefer a clear one because even if you're using it with a blue one, you can still see the coloring shining through there in that case. So that's the eye catch, the Maxence eye catch. It's a cat catching a mouse. Really cool little concept. This wasn't the only one, um, only pro piece of plastic design that was made for explicitly for the uh, puck mouse. There was also the Uni Trap. I uh, can't remember the company, but there's a, this thing called the Uni Trap. I don't like that one as much because with that one, I think you have to pull off these tabs and then the actual thing itself kind of takes control of the whole mouse. I think that's not as nice. It's, it's, it's definitely not as aesthetically pleasing as the eye catch, which is, it's less invasive. It's just adding a, you know, just adding a bit of support. The other one kind of transforms the whole mouse into something different. But those are two different options you could get. Uh, there may have been more. I think there may have been some other ones as well, perhaps some cheaper ripoffs from China as well, but that's it. The Maxence eye catch. So another piece of translucent plastics. Hope you learned a bit of history today and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.